I'm going to now bring on our next speaker, Chris Hansen, moved from busting predators to being the president and founding partner of Valiant Capital Management LP, a global long, short, public and private equity firm based in San Francisco. The firm has had a strong bias towards emerging markets, which just proves we all have unconscious biases. Are the jokes getting worse? Is this my fault? <laughs> Maybe we're all tired. I don't know. Please welcome Chris Hansen, everybody. All right. Man, I wish I had that haircut now. Impressive. Um, uh, the name I'm here to talk about today is Zillow. Uh, quick disclaimer. Uh, here, and I would just add to that, we obviously own the stock and stand a benefit uh, if it goes up. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time uh, on this. I mean, Zillow is $7 billion market cap, $6 billion EV, trading about four times revenues and 30 times EBITDA. And I think most of you, it's safe to say, are probably familiar with this business as a consumer, given that Zillow has about 70% market share of all online real estate searches. They aggregate residential real estate. We all come and visit. Some of us check Zestimates. Uh, some of those people who visit are obviously potential buyers. Zillow aggregates them and sells those leads to agents, as you guys are all probably familiar. This started out as a very manual process. And with automation and technology, Zillow's gotten a lot better at this and actually sells the majority of their leads in an automated way now. We think there's another big stair step for this business coming. Um, as Zillow moves in what they're calling flex, which means instead of selling the leads, they're going to be taking a piece of the commission. And we think that'll be very big for them. But this business right now generates about $1.2 billion in revenues and about $300 million or $250 million in EBITDA. And importantly, all of that is from buyers. Zero is from sellers. What has us so excited about this business is Zillow's entry into the seller business. And, and you've probably heard this term, that's tubbed iBuying. What is iBuying? At its core, it really just means using data and technology to identify and purchase homes, do some spruce ups to those homes, collect some ancillary revenue streams, which we'll talk about, and then resell those homes in a very short period of time. The huge advantage that I think you can all appreciate that Zillow has here is that it has all this traffic coming to its site. It already has its estimate. And all it is doing here, in its case, is putting an offer to buy your home below this estimate. We can see what that looks like down here. We scraped this from the internet, this offer, and you can see that Zillow makes some estimate of what they think the home is worth or what it would sell for. They then charge you a fee. In this case, it's about 9%. And then they give you all of the services that would be included in a net number. And they would compare that to what you would get with a traditional agent. And you can see in this case, Zillow's, not, Zillow's being honest that you could probably get a little bit more from selling it to a, be a traditional agent. However, we think Zillow's costs are lower than you selling it. And that's really in a few ways. One, it's lowering the commission that it pays for brokers. Two, there's going to be leverage in its ability to fix up the cost, given it will have scale. And three, there will be some leverage in closing costs. And this is what's really important and I think underappreciated. There's a huge value proposition to consumers. First, there's a lot of cases where maybe we've purchased another home or are moving across the country. It could be anything where we want liquidity. Zillow is going to offer to buy this home, as will other open offer platforms, in as little as seven to 10 days. That is new for this asset class. But much more important than that is the fact that you can choose your closing date. You don't have to go through the hassle of hiring an agent. You don't have to fix up your home. You don't have to host open houses. This is probably one of the least pleasurable experiences I think it's safe to say that any of us has to go through. Nothing that we would look forward to, and we would pay, pay to have this done. We would take a discount for this. In terms of market size, this is probably the largest TAM in the US. It's about 1.24 trillion in total existing home sales. And even if we haircut that to the top 50 markets in the US, and then just look at the homes that we think Zillow will transact in of 250 to 500,000, we end up with a very big market, $318 billion. And just by uh, way of comparison, Zillow's estimate here of about $20 billion in iBuyer revenues is about 6% of that 
318 billion, or less than 2% of the total. We can see here that Zillow's been moving very, very quickly. Uh, you know, they're now, after launching in Phoenix and Vegas last year and testing the markets, they're now in nine markets and will be in another five by this fall. And revenues from this category are therefore rank, ramping very quickly. Based on our research, we think they're run rating at 800 million in revenues today and over a billion dollars in purchases. And you can see there on the bottom, five of these markets just launched in the last six months. So we think this number will probably double by year end. And this is what's really interesting, the next couple slides, is that they've gone from zero to 1% market share of our home sold in Phoenix in six months without any advertising. But what's more impressive than that is this. Zillow is receiving offers in its second month without any advertising of 15% of all homes sold in the Phoenix market. That ramped to 25% in its, the next month and 35% 35, 35 by October. Put another way, for every home Zillow is buying, it is getting offers for 34 that it's not. And that is pointing to, we think, a much higher level of demand. And given those, I mean, the right way to think about it as a consumer, why would you not request an open offer? If you were gonna sell your home, wouldn't you check this and show it to your agent and say you better do better than this? And that brings us to a really key point here. Zillow is in the business already of selling leads. We'll have our presentation online, you guys can look through this afterward, but at just a five to 10% conversion rate, we think the lead gen from seller leads, which they are getting zero now, will be somewhere between 100 and 600 million in revenue. Now, if we compare that to their existing business, this looks modest. They're already generating over a billion dollars in buyer leads. More importantly, when we look at this on a per home basis for what they're buying, this is $1,400 to almost $10,000 per home that they actually buy, or a negative CAC. This is something you will hardly see with any company, a negative 50 basis point to 270 basis point CAC. Which brings us to another ancillary revenue stream that we think Zillow will collect, and that's mortgages. Just like the traditional home builders, we think Zillow is gonna be in the mortgage origination business. They won't keep them on balance sheet. They recently bought Mortgage Ledgers of America, have rebranded at Zillow Mortgage. Because they own the home, they can originate a mortgage. And we think this business will look a lot like it does for the home builders. 50 to 75% attach rates, 20 to 35% margins. When we look at the margin, that's another 30 to 70 basis points per home. And lastly, I don't think there's any doubt in any of our minds who have tried to hire a contractor, Zillow should get a lot of margin in the or economies of scale in the spruce up. This is not a full remodel. This is like carpet, paint, landscaping. We think by employing full-time crews, they'll earn a margin of about 50% or so on these services, primarily charged to the consumer. So the margin will show up in the fee that they charge. And this is where we think the big misconception lies in Zillow stock and where the real opportunity lies. These fees together, or ancillary services, are about 1.3 to 5.4% of every home that we think they'll buy. Because we think that they will earn a profit on the fee they charge to cover all their costs, this is all margin to Zillow. They don't need to make anything on the flip. I think this is a real big misperception in people who are following the stock because this is so new. Additionally, there is no way they are not gonna charge a discount. They have to charge a discount. Every offer would be accepted if they bid at parity. All of us would rather just sell at parity. We think that one to 4% is reasonable and maybe even conservative. And when we add that all up, we get to 2.3 to 9.4% per home. This goes through a little more detail and shows the cost here. And we see that because they're leveraging, getting a little bit of leverage in the fee they're gonna charge, those, these margins are a little bit higher. And I would just note that we are charging both the interest cost on the holding period here and the sell side commissions on the way out. Which leads us to another, I think, great misperception that this is a low return on vested capital business. If you are earning three to 10% and you are turning these homes four to six times a year, the return on invested capital should be very, very high from this business. And the reason for this misconception, I think, is shows like Flip or Flop and all of our friends that are in this business and friends of friends. Most people look at the flipping business as like a six to 18 month time frame. We're trying to make 30%. And we don't have any of these uh, things that Zillow has here, negative CAC. No, no traditional flipper is in the selling of leads business, is in the mortgage business, has economies of scale in these things. 
The other big misperception, I think, is that this is going to be a super, super cyclical business and this housing downturn, it might get wiped out for these guys. And I think if you look at the last 30 years of stock or of home prices, home prices just don't move that fast in a three month period. More importantly, they tend to move up. If anything, this is a tailwind. We don't see any cases of quarterly returns here that would cause Zillow to lose money in any meaningful way on a nationwide basis. Market by market, sure. I think the most important takeaway from this slide is that Zillow must be you know, very stringent about selling in the 60 to 90 day period. If they turn these into holds, or any of these iBuyers, this could really hurt them. Last thing I would say is we think Zillow has an exceptional management team. Uh, Rich Barton, uh, you guys may be familiar with, founder of Expedia, before founding Zillow, founded Glassdoor, which was recently sold to recruit, uh, and has a great track record. We think he's a great strategic thinker. His co-founder, Lloyd Fink, uh, we think the world of two, and recently Alan Parker coming over for Amazon. And, and Rich has, after selling Glassdoor, has been recently buying a lot of stock in Zillow, uh, which has us excited as well. So when we add this all up, we're looking at a market cap of seven billion and we see incremental revenues of 20 to 24 billion dollars from this opportunity in the next three to five years. Operating profits of 500 million to 2.3 billion, which would bring the total to one to three billion. So, I mean, the scale of this opportunity we think is enormous. And in summary, I mean, an exceptional management team addressing an important and unmet consumer uh, need. I would bet that if I gave this presentation in three years, almost everybody in here who would have sold their home will have requested an open offer, assuming it's, you're, not, you're not living in a $20 million home or something like this. Uh, dominant online market share, significant economies of scale, attempting to monetize the largest TAM in the US with a business model that has very high returns on capital, leading to incremental profits of over $2 billion with a market cap of less than $7 billion and an EV of $6 billion. Needless to say, if our thesis is even remotely correct, we think there's multiples of upside for the stock. We own the stock and we actually own long dated calls uh, because we think that, again, multiples here, probably four to five times upside if our thesis plays out over the next three to five years. So thank you very much, appreciate it. And again, the, we'll post our uh, presentation online if any of you want to look through the details.